everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about showering following a mastectomy or similar procedure. Now, there's a lot of different variation in these procedures depending on what type you have, how many incisions are present, if there's drains present, there's a lot of different factors. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to cover as much as I can, um, but it's really, really important that the first step is talking to your surgeon and your surgical team about what restrictions are gonna be in place for you. So the sooner you can get that information, the sooner you can start planning. So I wanna show you how I set up individuals for this type of shower, that, so they can take their showers fairly early on following surgery. And that can feel so good after having such a difficult surgery and a kind of painful recovery. It can feel so nice to have a nice hot shower. So the first things first is when I set up the bathroom, I wanna make sure it's conducive to being safe. And one of those key features of safety is gonna be a seat. I always recommend individuals have a seat available in the shower following surgery of any kind so that you can prepare for things like fatigue, pain, fluctuations in blood pressure, which is not uncommon following a surgical procedure, and just being able to enjoy your shower from a seated position. This is a low cost stool. Um, I like this one, it's by Drive. I'm gonna link below to this particular stool, but also note that it's important to know what your shower can accommodate. Um, some showers are not going to have as big a footprint, so you need something smaller. Some individuals like a bigger shower seat with a back. Definitely take consideration of what you prefer and get what you like for your shower. Another thing that I recommend very, very strongly is a handheld shower head. Something that can come down and be at your level if you're going to be seated for your bathing process. This is also very important when you have wounds to consider because oftentimes following surgery, those wounds cannot become soaked they need to be kind of avoided by the volume of shower water. So having something you can control like this is really important. Now a few features I also like to add when I have a shower head like this is one of the key features is a shower head holder. So something that holds the shower head down at the height that is most conducive to your position. Oftentimes with reconstructive surgeries, you're going to have a restriction on how high you can raise your arm over your head, typically at about 50%, so about here, um, versus up here. So you need to make sure that the shower head can be applied low enough that you can retrieve it yourself. So I like this setup. I have a, obviously a grab bar here with this mounted shower head holder, but there are others that can just mount directly to the wall of your shower. I'm gonna link a few of my favorites in the description. So you want this to be able to be placed at a very comfortable level and then kind of directed wherever it is away from your surgical incisions. Now, another thing that I like to have is if your shower head doesn't come with an on off valve so you can kind of turn it on and off from this level. And I'm gonna turn it on so I can show you what I mean. So you can see on this one, I added a valve on the side and this is actually a secondary piece because this shower head did not have controls on it. This little piece is very low cost, under $10 and goes between the hose and the shower head and allows me full control to turn it on and off however I need to throughout the showering process. And that's just a really great idea to have in place so that you're fully in control of your showering experience. So another thing to consider is the wounds. If you have surgical wounds, which you likely will following these types of procedures, you're, there's a variety of ways that you could come home. One of the ways that's most common is with drains. Now these drains have the tubes and the drain bulbs and those have to be managed. And oftentimes you'll hear that you're not allowed to shower with drains in place. So again, make sure you clarify this with your surgeon and surgical team. But what I have found that is if you're going to have drains in place for an extended period of time, there are options. You can shower. One of the options is something called a shower shirt, imaged here. This was designed by an individual who was recovering from breast cancer, had had these surgeries and needed a solution better than a garbage bag covering their top half. It's really well designed. It is extremely comfortable because it holds the drainage tubes up and out of the way and the drainage bulbs up and out of the way, completely covers the area. So you can take a pretty relaxing shower with all of that still in place and covered. Now you can also take a shower with those drainage tubes in place if they've been in place for a long time. Sometimes it's okay to get that area a little wet because it's more of a closed incision. In that case, you need a lanyard to hold those tubes or the uh, tubes and bulbs up in place. These lanyards are really low cost and are pretty much recommended for all tasks, not just bathing, but to keep those bulbs and tubes up and out of the way so they're not just hanging and pulling on those surgical areas. Now, if you have your drains removed, it's recommended you wait at least 24 hours following the drainage uh, tubes being pulled before taking a shower. So that's an important thing. You do need to wait about 24 hours once those tubes have been removed. 
Another time where you would want to wait a little bit is if you have no drainage tubes in place, but you do have that initial surgical, usually um, gauze and paper tape bandaging, that you do not want to get wet at all, and it is recommended you wait until that bandaging is removed before trying your first shower, whether that's a sponge bath or a shower. And those are typically move, removed around 48 hours after surgery, so you may have to wait a few days. Once those are removed though, it's important that you keep in mind keeping that area from becoming soaked. That's why this is important. I also recommend keeping a towel nearby. If you do by accident in the process of taking your shower, get a surgical area a little bit damp or a little wet, make sure you have a towel, a nice clean towel. This needs to be cleaned after every use to make sure that we're not transferring bacteria. And instead you do not wanna rub the area, you want to tap. You want to tap those surgical incisions. Never rub a surgical incision, it can cause irritation. So a nice soft towel to tap dry in between can help keep that area as dry as possible. Okay, so another thing I recommend is considering the restrictions in the shoulders. Now the restrictions in the shoulders may be very temporary for some, or it could be longer term, depending on the amount of, um, uh, the amount of restrictions present from your surgeon. I created a product, um, and this is a fully silicone bending um, body and scalp scrubber. And it was created for individuals who are recovering from similar procedures that have limitations in shoulder movement. And what's cool about this is it's fully made out of silicone, so this can be popped right in your dishwasher for full sanitizing in between uses, which is so important when we're talking about surgical recoveries, open wounds, and often cases where individuals are immunocompromised. So I really like that about this being as full silicone. Another feature to it is it has a metal core that allows it to be bent. And by bending it, it allows me to now reach things like my back really, really comfortably, keeping my shoulder in a neutral position. So if I have restrictions of shoulder flexion, I can actually get my back scrubbed. I can go this way, I can go this way, and I'm keeping my shoulders pretty neutral. So it can be a little bit better for pain management and certainly keep you within your precautions. Another option for this, and this is the only option on the market that allows you to do this, is if I bend it this direction, you can see on this side, this side has nice soft bristles. This side has a little bit pointier bristles. These are designed as a scalp scrubber. So now, without reaching up over my head, ooh, there's not a good option. Now with this, I can simply wash my hair, apply my favorite shampoo, conditioner, and rub it into my scalp and get a really good thorough scalp rub using this, again, keeping my shoulders within their precautions. So important to consider that if you're gonna have those precautions present for any length of time and wanna be able to shower as independently as possible. So this product, again, I created and it's gonna be in the links down below available on Amazon. So the other thing to consider is when you get out of the shower, how you're going to be um, drying yourself. And again, keeping in mind that you're going to possibly have shoulder restrictions or discomfort when moving your shoulders, a smaller, lighter towel can often be easier to manage. So this is just a hand towel. Having a few hand towels available to do the volume of drying from a seated position is advisable versus using a big, heavy towel. Upon completing the volume of drying, so getting most of your body dry, that's when I'd love to incorporate a robe, like a terry cloth robe or something like that that you can wear to finish the drying process. It's much more energy efficient and much more conducive to this type of healing. So I hope this information is valuable to you. I gave you a lot here. So if you have questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.